part C, we have the min value at negative pi n3. So here's negative pi here, negative pi over 2. Okay, so negative pi n3 is at that black dot. And the nearest maximum to the right is at 0, 7. That's the y-intercept. So again, we want to find out the amplitude. In this case, although we haven't been given the amplitude, the amplitude is is going to be the half distance between the min and the max. So the amplitude then is going to be the distance. So I'm going to subtract and I'm going to take half that distance and I get an amplitude of 2. So there's my amplitude. My vertical shift is going to be halfway in the middle here, which is going to be 5. And again, we can take that, do that by an average of 7 plus 3 divided by 2 gives us the average of 5. And then we need a period here. The period, here we have a half period between min and max, represents a half period. So our half period is equal to pi. Okay, we can subtract to get a half the half period. So the period then works out to be 2 pi. And from there, we can get a horizontal compression of 1. Okay, there is no compression or expansion. And then lastly, for the sine function, we can use this point here, the halfway point, as a starting point of our sine function. So we're going to use that negative pi over 2 as our c value. So we end up with y is equal to amplitude of 2, no horizontal compression. And then we have our horizontal shift of negative pi over 2. So we're going to go plus pi over 2 and our vertical shift of plus 5. Now this question, we maybe should say that x is in radians. Because the next question here, if we take a look at this one, this one's going to be in degrees because they tell us, they give us a minimum point at 90 and negative 6, and the next maximum to the right is at 150 degrees and 4. So that's what it looks like. So if I were to sketch this in, this gives us, we can do this in quadrants. That's the first quadrant. There's a second quadrant, okay, so that represents the middle value. So each quadrant is going to be, is going to give us those kind of arcs. And so again, that's our min to max. We still want to find our A value. The A value is going to be the distance. So I'm going to subtract those coordinates, take the absolute value, and then I'm divide it by 2. So I get an amplitude of 5. So this distance from middle to top is 5 and we can actually count that if we really wanted to. The D value is halfway in between so I'm going to find the average of 4 and negative 6, 4 up, negative 6 down. If I take the average of that I get a position of negative 1. So this blue line is the middle vertical line and it's negative 1. We want our period Again, this represents our half period. That's going to be, we subtract to get a distance, and we get a half period of 60. So the period is equal to 120 degrees. Okay, so it's been horizontal, comp horizontally compressed by 3. So that means then our B value should be 360 degrees divided by 120, which gives us our horizontal compression of times 3. Lastly, the starting position of sine, we're going to use that middle point here. It's going up, so it's going to be a positive sign. And so we'll use this position here. This position is halfway between 90 and 150. That's going to be 120 degrees, so that represents our horizontal shift. So our equation is going to look like this. Our amplitude, horizontal compression is 3. Our horizontal shift is 120 degrees to the right. Our vertical shift is negative 1 down. And x is then in degrees. Now, normally we're going to do everything in radians, but there are some questions in the textbook that are based on degrees, so, but mostly we're going to deal with radians.